Welcome back to Fox Stars on the Hill live this Sunday morning. Here tomorrow on Capitol Hill, the director of the Secret Service will be testifying about how a lone gunman was able to fire shots at a former president of the United States. Last weekend, one person was killed in that attack. Director of the Secret Service Kimberly Cheadle will be asked about what went wrong and why the Secret Service reportedly denied additional security requests by the former president's campaign. Democratic Congressman Glenn Ivey joins us from Maryland this morning. Uh, once again, on this desk, we appreciate your time. Um, you have a law enforcement background that we've discussed many times, both in the uh, U.S. Justice Department and as a state prosecutor as well, too. What questions do you have about what happened in Butler last weekend? Well, quite a few. I mean, I think you want essentially sort of a minute-by-minute -minute breakdown of what happened at the time. Uh, you know, we got a briefing on the phone uh, from the Secret Service and FBI last week, and it went through some of the details, but you want all of them. Like, when was he spotted? And how quickly did they respond? Um, and I th you've got the separate set of questions. What do we do differently next time to make sure nothing like that happens again? We are probably at a boiling point in American politics right now. It would be safe to say... But doesn't have to, have to be stripped away when we have this conversation because, yes, it was former President Donald Trump and people may have political opposition and problems with his positions. But we're talking about a former president of the United States who was darn near killed last weekend. And doesn't there have to be a clinical discussion about this and how the Secret Service failed in their attempt to keep the president, former president safe? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think it makes sense to have a detailed uh, factual investigation. I know they've got internal investigations going on. Mm -hmm. Secret Service does. FBI has a criminal investigation, which looks like it's not going to result in any findings of a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. But Congress has a role in this, too, and I look forward to participating in that. But clearly, there was a breakdown here. Yeah. Stephen Sund, who was the former chief of the U.S. Capitol Police Department, resigned his job the next day after the insurrection. The former Secret Service director during the Obama administration left her job when the front door was unlocked once and somebody got in with a knife to the White House. How is this Secret Service director still Secret Service director today, and should she step down? Well, I'm not pressing for that yet. I'd like to have the investigation done first before we start, you know, uh, terminating people or uh, firing people. I'm, I'm not in, in this for the scapegoating piece. And the other part of this, too, is... We've got to make sure we understand that our, you know, our allies are not the only ones watching this. We've got adversaries who are paying attention to this, terrorist organizations and the like. We've got to make sure we totally identify what the holes are, not just in Butler, but in any other aspect of our protection programs so that our, uh, our, our presidential candidates are safe. Republicans are raising questions about this news now that Secret Service had denied some requests from the Trump campaign when it came to security protocols. Um, are they right to turn an eye to that right now? Because it's raising a lot of eyebrows that if a, a figure, you know, uh, with the profile of Donald Trump is asking for something and the, the Secret Service is denying it, did that play a role in this? Did they lean on local law enforcement, Pennsylvania local authorities too much and not have the Secret Service really fully with their arms around that site? Yeah, I think we absolutely have to take a look at that because part of it, I think, is going to end up being resources. So the Secret Service doesn't bring all of its staff uh, to cover the whole thing. They rely on local uh, police to help. Some of that makes sense because sometimes you're going to need local factors or, you know, how to get around. Mm -hmm. But it, we don't want it to be a scenario where they're having to rely on people who they haven't trained with, for example, mm -hmm. to maintain this level of protection. We wanted to lean on that because of your uh, law enforcement background. But I want to change gears on you right now to politics. Sure. Many of your colleagues have called for President Biden to step down leave the campaign, pass the torch, whatever phrase you want to use for it. Where are you on that right now? I'm not in favor of that at the moment. I, I think it's important. And I've, I've been very public about that position. I think he's got an outstanding record to run on. The Biden-Harris team had a great uh, first term, and they can run on that record and need to. He's got a good vision for the future. I think we need to really pivot to that piece and start explaining to the public exactly what that is because they're looking for the pocketbook issues to be addressed that, that they're concerned about and while we've got the circular firing squad going that's that's not helping and then the other quick point is you know it's not like just picking somebody else is going to fix anything in fact it, 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 it could lead to a chaotic convention that i think would undermine us even more and then you're left with 
you know, the, the campaign funds don't transfer to other other parties other than Harris. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the infrastructure doesn't transfer. You're asking somebody to put up a presidential campaign that can win in 60 days. That's a very tall order. We got 10 seconds. It's a big question. Could Harris win? Oh, yeah, I think so. But I think the Biden-Harris team can win and is our best chance to win. And we need to help them help them accomplish that. All right. Glenn Ivey is the uh, congressman from the uh, state of Maryland. We appreciate your time joining us this morning. Thank you. All right.